In this presentation, we'll be going over the fundamentals of preparing free body diagrams. Uh, we'll be using them throughout the course as they are an essential tool for analyzing problems uh, in statics. Uh, our simplified problem is laid out on the page. And to optimize our efficiency wherever possible, I'm going to try to line up my free body diagram under the simplified uh, drawing. Uh, this will allow us to quickly transfer scale or dimensions uh, from one drawing to the other while minimizing repetition. I pick up my line tool and I'm going to drop some lines down and I'm going to drop a line down wherever there is a key dimension or component. So I've uh, gone ahead and dropped all of the uh, key uh, lines down so we can see how that carries the dimensions down to where we're going to put our free body diagram. And I've also gone ahead and put in a center of gravity line to represent our structure. Uh, we don't normally put uh, our thickness or cross-sectional dimension into our diagrams as it, it overly complicates things and uh, distracts from how the forces are carried through the structure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do some quick labeling of our diagram. So we'll label that as free body diagram. Very important so that your uh, follow-on checkers and that can tell what uh, you've done, what your logic is. It should flow as well as I'm going to label my right hand system. In this case I'm just going to label my X and my Y as a two-dimensional uh, system and the Z is implied because I'm not going to be referring to the uh, the Z axis particularly much in, in most of these instances. To the free body diagram we must add all, now add all of the externally applied loads and I normally start with point loads and distributed loads that are added to the system. I'll get my ruler out here just to keep things a little bit neat, although it is a, intended to be a hand sketch. We no need to be doing everything with a ruler. And we'll put in our triangular distributed load and I'll label those up so we know what their units are. We have 15 kilonewtons and an intensity of 2 kilonewtons per meter for our triangular distributed load. Now for some texts, they might suggest that the distributed loads be replaced by their equivalent point load. And, you know, that allows for some simplicity in calculations uh, later on. Now, while this is technically correct, there is some risk associated with doing this, uh, particularly if you're going to start doing a partial free body diagram later. If you don't recognize that you've replaced the distributed load with an equivalent point load, you might make a mistake at that point. I prefer that we keep the distributed load always uh, where it's at. And if it's desirable, we can always add our equivalent point load. And here I'm going to use a different color so that we know that both are not being done at the same time. I'll put a little annotation through the arrow uh, to show that it is replacing or it's equivalent to the distributed load. And I'll go ahead and do its calculation. So the area under the curve, in this case, one half uh, the intensity, which is two kilonewtons per meter, multiplied by the length over which the distributed load is applied, which is two meters. And that will give us a value of two kilonewtons. So now we need to uh, replace our boundary conditions with the uh, reaction forces that they can cause. So if we go to A, we remove the pin support at A and we replace it with the components of force or the components of the reactions that it can cause. So here we have a vertical component and potentially a horizontal component as well. And then the roller support at B gets replaced with the single vertical component, which is all it can support. We label these, so we have the reaction at A, the X, reaction at A in the Y, reaction at B in the Y direction. Now, just uh, to review our diagram, I guess the one last thing that I should do before I'm done is we put that equivalent point load in, but we didn't note its dimension or where it's occurring. So I'm just going to add a quick little dimension line in here and note that that is at one third of the length of two meters. So it ends up being two thirds of a meter from the, uh, the blunt end of the triangle. And with that, that, that pretty much sums up the free body diagram. This will become the, the basic tool that we use for the rest of the calculations. And so it's really important that we get it right to set the problem off. So we'll come back and we'll carry on and we'll solve for our reaction.